Hey guys, welcome to Rosie's Dessert Spot. Today we'll be making this concrete style cake with a dividing gold buttercream barrier at the base. I've used a seven inch cake for this project, three, uh, two of them, cut in half to create a four layered cake in total. The buttercream that I've used here is the hybrid frosting, so I'll make sure to link that recipe in the eye icon up top. I added a whole bunch of cocoa powder to make it nice and chocolatey. Once you finish stacking your cake layers, create a crumb coat. This is just a thin layer of frosting all around the cake to trap in the crumbs and even out the layers. You can go side by side as I have here, pressing the buttercream up towards the top of the cake and then back down towards the base. Or you can work across the cake, working horizontally, filling in the spaces at the bottom and the top as you go. Once you've covered your bases on the side, grab that frosting scraper and start smoothing out the edges of your cake. Go around a few times to really help move that buttercream around into those empty spaces. If you have pockets that are a little bit too deep, you can fill in with more buttercream and smooth out until you're happy with the finish. Drag that lip of frosting towards the middle of the cake with a nice wide spatula and then pop your cake into the fridge to set for a good 20 minutes. From here, if you like, you can color your buttercream. I've used uh, about four drops of black gel food color and a drop of yellow to create this gray. Sometimes I find when I add black gel food color to white frosting, it creates like a purple tinged gray and I really don't like it. So I add a bit of yellow to balance that out into a true gray. Grab your frosting scraper, smooth it out again till you're happy with the finish and repeating, just dragging that lip of frosting towards the middle. Once you're done, pop your cake into the fridge to set for another 20 minutes. And in the meantime, you can work on your chocolate shard. This is baking paper, just creating a puddle of dark chocolate right in the middle. Compound chocolate works really well here. Once you're happy with the shape, I just swiped it across with my spatula. You can scrunch up or fold your baking paper. Use pegs to help keep it in place and then transfer it onto a plate or onto a cookie sheet that'll fit in your freezer and just let it set either in the fridge or freezer. Now that my cake is nice and firm, I'm applying a secondary color of um, gray frosting, something a little bit darker, and I'm going to smooth it out with my spatula and then moving onto the scraper. You could leave it as is. I wanted to have a bit more of a concrete effect, so I just continued to smooth it out, add in more color, and just try to make it a bit more rustic. Once you're happy with the final look, you can bring that lip of frosting back towards the middle because it will raise a bit of lip. This is what you want though. As it does, you'll notice that the uh, edges become a lot sharper. For the base of the cake, I wanted to paint it in gold, so I used a yellow color for the buttercream and that way it's a bit more camouflage. If I had like a gold colored gel food color, I would have gone with that instead. Try and make it as close to your last dust color as possible. Smooth it out, pop it into the fridge again for 20 minutes and that way it sets nice and firm and as you're brushing your edible paint onto your buttercream, it won't mess it up or leave brush marks in your frosting. This is Edible Luster Dust by Rolcom in Super Gold. I added some rose water spirit to create a paint and then I'm using a super wide brush to brush it on. You could go over in two layers, so let the first layer set completely and then go over a second time to really enhance that rich gold painted look. Very metallic, I think. And then do the same for some macarons. This time I'm just going to take some goldish colored macarons, pop them into a Ziploc bag with that same gold dust, give it a bit of a toss around to coat and you end up with gold looking macarons. To assemble all of our decorations, I'm going to start with the shard and I'm cutting into the top of the cake to make some room for the base of the shard. If you were to try to press it in without cutting out that space for it, you would A, risk breaking your beautiful shard that you waited so long to set. And secondly, um, if you do succeed and you don't break your shard, it'll create a bit of compression in your cake and you'll end up having um, the cake sponge shift a bit because under the pressure of that wide, um, that wide chocolate shard. 
basically you're just making room to make sure that it fits without breaking and that the cake doesn't compress. Add some edible decorations like Maltesers. I've got a lovely block of lint chocolate that I'm going to dust over in gold as well. And I've just stuck everything together with more of that buttercream in dark grey. For the tip, I've used number 32 piping tip to create those tiny stars. You can really see the concrete effect there. And as a finishing touch, add on some chocolate drip. So this is just regular dark chocolate melted down. I didn't add anything to it, just straight onto the cake on one side. And that's it. That's how you create a fun concrete cake with some gold accents and edible decorations. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this cake decorating tutorial. If you do try it out, let me know with a hashtag Rosie's Dessert Spot on your photos so I can see it too. Thanks again for tuning in and we'll see you in the next one.